What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking back in after a year on Sands of Salzar. This is kind of like a budget Mountain Blade Warband with a little bit more like RPG mechanics to it, I guess. It's kind of a tough game to describe. It sort of exists inside of its own space. And while there is kind of a copious quantity of jank that comprises this game, uh, the UI is absolutely brutal and hopefully they kind of redo it. Uh, aside from that, I have been enjoying my time sort of exploring the world and figuring out how all the systems work. Now, just be aware of the fact that this game was originally made in a different language, so the English translation can be a little bit rough. It can kind of be difficult from time to time to figure out exactly what a thing does, but they've mostly got it smoothed over. We're going to dive in today. We're going to spend about 25-30 minutes with the game, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list, or if it's just not for you. Aside from that, you can also check out my Twitch link down below, where I frequently play the games that I show off here on the YouTube channel in longer play format, so that you can get a little bit better of an idea if it's something you wanted to add to the collection. And then you'll also find a link to my Discord, which is the central hub for my entire community. Okay, let's play the game. New game! We'll play on open world mode. That sounds great. We get a little we get a little cutty scene right here. Okay, let's do the cutty scene. They have returned. There was a war 20 years ago. That war took my father, my mother, my homeland, everything. The black sun rose in the sky, heralding destruction. You've protected mankind for a thousand years. Who am I to judge? But it all started with you. Now, I will be the one to finish it. I don't think the goddess is doing, I don't want to be judgmental here, but I don't think the goddess is doing a very good job if we've been in constant war. All right, so the first thing we got to do is we got to pick our class. There are a bunch of people here that you can choose from. You can learn skills from all over the map for like various casting abilities and whatnot too. I don't know how much it matters. So like I've played as the spirit mancer and he's like a caster and early on in the game I found lots of caster trainers that taught me how to shoot fireballs and create wreaths of flame and all that kind of stuff. I've played the shaman and you know, it's kind of, it's, it seems like you can kind of learn what you want to learn aside from your basic class. So anyways, uh, they are putting in plot quests for all these characters. They haven't been fully implemented on every single class yet, but the last time we played the game, I think the plot quests weren't available at all. And so it looks like in the last year they've gotten through about like a third of the characters, I guess. Uh, the Nameless. What is the Nameless? You're an outsider in this world. All tribes regard you with a mixture of hostility and dread. Oh, we need 120 legacy. So this game is kind of weird in that there's in-between run unlocks. It's called your legacy. And so as you play the game, you're going to find these like little mining nodes called legacy, legacy shards. And as you pick them up, you unlock more different starting stuff that you can have for like future playthroughs to add some replayability. Uh, the Spirit Master is a caster. The Spirit... I think the Spirit Witch is the same thing as a Spirit Mancer. We have the Jackal over here. Apparently those with courage and madness to do whatever it is we cannot or will not do are bounty hunters. You can swashbuckle. It's dangerous, but a profitable career. Okay, so we're stealthy as assassin, and we've got the skills to get the job done and get paid. We can also summon other bounty hunters in. Uh, we can't learn magic, though, which is pretty tough. But we do start with two guys for backup, which might help. Uh, we've got the shaman over here. They start out with some wild wolves. Uh, this guy seems to be a fierce fighter and kind of a berserker who can shapeshift, but he can't learn magic. We have the knight errant over here. Apparently, the tribes don't like us. But we are like a swordsman, and we get lots of melee skills. Okay. Uh, we can also learn magic. So there you go. Uh, we can That actually be kind of cool. We have the Blade Dancer, which is a, let's see, a movement damage abilities, unusually perceptive. Uh, we can learn level 2 Arcana. Okay. 
All right, we got the Hashi Sheen over here, Hasha Sheen. Uh, it's an assassin, basically. She can learn level one magic, but she's all about backstabbing things. She doesn't have any followers. Okay. Uh, we've got... Apparently the Berserker uh, cannot learn magic, but he's got lots of primal damage attacks, and he starts with a bear. That's pretty cool. You once defeated a bear in bare-knuckle combat. I like the punniness of that. They have now joined your war party. That's that's how it works in bear society, dude. You go out into the woods, and you just knuckle-punch a bear, and they're like, Woo! and they just join you like a dog, and they just hang out with you for the rest of your life. Uh, we have the Sentinel. You're a warrior from Jamal City whose father used to be a palace guard. Okay. We can learn level one arcana, but... It's mostly abilities that taunt. Okay, so he's kind of tanky. Let's try out the Knight Errant since I've never played around with him before. It looks like we have a relationship with a... We have bad relationships with tribes. Gotcha. Well, he doesn't actually have any followers, though. Maybe I want to have somebody with, like, a follower. We'll try out the Bounty Hunter. He's got a sweet hat, dude. All right, so this is the legacy system. So basically, we can use our legacy points at the beginning of the game to buy new abilities and to buy extra money to start out with and to buy extra people for our squad. The downside here is that, like, these right here, you got to get to 120 legacy points, and I'm not there yet. So what I am going to do is we will buy a medium resource over here. We'll confirm that. That'll give us, I think, $3,000, 150 wood, 150 ironstone, and 5 jade. Those are all going to be items that are used for this and that. Uh, you can use them for crafting. You can use them for hiring people. You can use them for buying gear, all that kind of stuff. We've got an archery fire blast. Okay. I don't really know any archery, so I don't think that's going to help that much. Spearcraft would be kind of cool, though. Yeah, that'd be kind of sick, dude. I like spears. Yeah, let's buy spearcraft. Sweet, dude. Yeah, I've got legacy left, but I'm, like, not that worried about spending it. Uh, now we get to customize our character. You actually can choose, like, a baseline model for what you want him to look like. And then you can also modify the portrait a little bit if you want to. I like this little guy with the wolf hat, so I think we're going to have a wolf hat. Is there a wolf hat in here that I could... Yeah, there we go. Give me the, give me the wolf hat, so at least it matches, dude. Hair and oh, we can have it be flowy in the back too. Yeah, let's have. Ooh, we got that Fabio hair in the back. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's the good stuff right there. Uh, we'll be nope, not D platty. We'll be splatty. There we go. That's that's what happens. Your fingers stray off the home row and you just get yourself into trouble. Okay, so there's a bunch of content options here you can choose from. There's real injuries, all that kind of stuff. There's how much you can roll, uh, how much food matters. I just leave everything on default and go for it. Bounty hunters are daredevils, and they're willing to take on the most difficult tasks for fame and glory. Their mystery and danger of their profession has given them legendary status. You are the leader of a bounty hunter organization known as the Jackals. As the leader, you have led your followers to complete many dangerous and difficult tasks. But the past is in the past, and as you look to the future, you must find new employers and new work to feed yourself and your followers. Alright, let's start our journey. You're in a merchant's camp nestled inside a valley. Beyond lies the desert. Uh, there are some various people we can talk to around here. Let's take a look at the UI for a minute so that you guys can figure out what that looks like. We've got the day that we're currently a part of. Over here, we've got our legacy, which is how many points that we've unlocked. Uh, I have played the game before. Like, I played for like an hour before recording this. But I guess that it maybe didn't add my rewards. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you've got to, like, finalize the game or something and retire in order for it to work. We have in-game messages. Down here at the bottom, we have how much XP we have towards our next level. Top right, we have our resources, our gold, our wood, our iron, how much jade we have, and how much food we have available. We can go to the inventory menu. Looks like we've started out with a wooden cuirass, and we have a hammer. We probably want to equip those because they're going to give a pretty significant boost to our defense and our offense. Inside of our party menu, uh, we've got characters over here. So characters are guys like Rolf uh, from Mountain Blade Warband. Uh, they're actual characters with like storylines and things that they're actively trying to work on and stuff like that. And then squads are kind of generic units that you pick up in town, sort of might and magic style, that will follow you around and fight for you no matter what decisions you make. Uh, so anyways, these are going to comprise the bulk of our army, and in fact, it gave us ten of them. I didn't realize, they said we had two followers. I thought we were going to have two named guys uh, that we would be able to level up and kind of customize. Instead, we've got ten soldiers backing us up. I'm not that upset about it, though, because that's actually pretty helpful in the early game. Let's go ahead and head northwards. 
Then we gotta cross over this bridge over here. I don't think there's anything we can loot around here. You hear faint calls for help carried by the wind. The wind gets stronger and the sound becomes clearer. After a while, you finally get to see the owner of the voice. It's a middle-aged man dressed in ragged clothes carrying a staff. He grasps a masked woman's hands and runs desperately, chasing him as a group of humanoid monsters ensconced with flame. Help! Save me! Before you can respond, the creatures of living fire rush towards you. Alright, here we go. Let's go fight these guys with our giant ridiculous warhammer. There we go. I'm on. It's kind of like Diablo combat. Uh, so that's the combat system right there. You do have orders that you can give to your guys, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like Diablo when you're playing a necromancer. Uh, all of the minions just kind of run around and use their special abilities and attack stuff, and then you hack and slash your way on through. Once you've got abilities, it gets a little bit more interesting because you can dash and like explode at the location where you come out, or you can jump into the sky and fall on people, or you can swing your hammer and knock people across the map. Uh, so it gets a little bit of like a Dynasty Warriors feeling too, I guess, as you get a little further in. Oof, thank you for your help. Can I ask your name? Splatty. My name is Malik, and I'm a scholar. She's Isra, an orphan that I picked up in Twin Luna Valley. She was interested in my studies, so I took her with me. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, bye. Thank you. Accept this token of our gratitude. You really are a kind person, and the area ahead is dangerous. I suggest you proceed with caution. So we got a hundred bucks right there as they express their gratitude. You discover that the Ifrit deteriorate very quickly. Like burned charcoal, they fall apart bit by bit until they are blown away in the wind. The Battle of the Black Sun made this world unrecognizable, but people have never stopped fighting it. The appearance of such a monster is likely to ch unlikely to change anyone's dreams of conquest. You brace your head against the wind and press forward. Off we go to take this little caravan over here to the desert. Aw, yeah. At the end of the valley, you see a caravan heading out into the desert. They're willing to take you with them and give you a trade permit. Sweet, dude. Okay, so we can go to Redstone Valley, which is recommended for new characters uh, because it's a little bit lower level. Over here, there's a guy named Whelan, and there's some plants over on this side. Who are you? Ah, another adventurer. Did you follow the caravan here? Well, don't look surprised. That's how I came to Salzar as well. People always seem to complain about how far they have to travel and how small their bag is, filled with too many weapons, broken, and in need of repair. I won't stand for that. I'm an old leather worker. In fact, I can expand your inventory for the right amount of money. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll come back and increase the size of our inventory a little bit later, but for now, there's a treasure chest under that tree. We got a rage elixir. Over here, my stand is simple, but my merchandise is anything but. Want to buy something unique? I don't have pets for sale right now. Come back another time. Okay, well, we'll get a, I'll, I'll get a pet someday, bro. Uh, are there any bad guys around? Ooh, there's a wolf pack down there. I wonder if we can handle a wolf pack. Let's do it. Let's fight the wolf pack. Onwards, my minions. We must destroy the denizens of the forest and field. Yeah, we seem to be doing okay. It doesn't look like I'm losing just yet, so that's always a good sign. I definitely hit considerably harder than the rest of my party. We've unlocked, sir. We've got some iron stone. Looks like we've got some utar, and we've got some throwing knives. I don't think I've ever used the throwing knives before. Maybe we'll take a look at that and see if that's something that we can incorporate into a build or something. Like, I don't know. We leveled up, so this is the skill tree. Every single class has a skill tree. In addition, you are not limited to, like, a single skill tree. Uh, as you go through the game, you can also unlock other skill trees that will add on into here. So, for example, on my caster, I had his basic spirit mancy. I had pyromancy. There, there's a bunch of other trees that you can unlock as you go through that are going to give you more upgrades, I guess. Uh, we can be most wanted. We can use a contract to summon two more bounty hunters to the battlefield. Summon troops get extra health and attack for 30 seconds. That actually seems really good, and I want that, so I'm gonna get it. I like having uh, oh shit buttons for when things go wrong so that I can be like, oh god! Uh, so these guys right here, it looks like when they hit level 5, we can upgrade them to amateur bounty hunters, and then later on they become horsemen, so that's pretty cool. Probably be helpful. Uh, there's a camp right here. This is a dungeon. I don't know if we can handle it. There's a legacy shard right there. That's what they look like. So there you go. We got Oh, a prestige shard. Sorry. Where's the clicky spot? There it is. Um, A gathering of bandits. Yeah, let's do it. I bet we could take them. You pull out your weapon and approach quietly. There we go. I don't feel like I summoned more guys to my aid. 
Like, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'm gonna suggest we fall back a little bit and let our dudes tank for us ever so slightly. Can't decide if I'm losing right now. This guy definitely seems dead set on getting me. There definitely seem to be a lot of them left. Like, I'm clunking who I can, where I can, I'm um, down. I will respawn momentarily, I think. Never mind, I won't respawn momentarily. So if you have other people in your party that are, like, named, you'll respawn after 10 seconds if they survive that long. Uh, but because we went down right there, unfortunately, that's that. Also, we lost a guy permanently. So... I can restore them, maybe? No, I think you need, like, a special potion to restore them or something like that. So, I may have gotten a little bit uh, optimistic with that fight right there. I've beaten that fight on other characters, and I was like, eh, with ten guys, we might be able to do it. And so I wanted to give it a fair smack and see if we could knock it out, but there's a little plant up there. But we want to go to town first. A Desert Tracker's Scroll. Okay, this is a statue of a famed martyr. Uh, these are literally like all dungeons. Oh, they can get troop HP if I pray here? Let's pray. Oh, we got to get down to the bottom of it first to pray. Gotcha. So it's definitely a dungeon. All right. Well, let's grab another one of these shards over here. I don't really want to explore until I have an army that's like capable of protecting itself. And the best way to do that is to come over here to Redstone Keep and go to the mercenary captain. And I want to hire some people. What do you have? Mercenary swordsmen are looking for work. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll hire them up. So now we got some mercenary swordsmen too. The party grows larger. Oh, we get eight of them. Very nice. And they seem to be considerably more stout and damaging than our basic bounty hunters. Cool. I can definitely accept that. All right, so what are we looking at here? There's quests around. You can take jobs. Uh, in the first place, though, I think it's a good idea that we kind of cruise around and we sort of, like, find some feeder fights to get a little bit stronger off of first. Rage Elixir right there. There's an abandoned mine over here. What else do we have? Uh, we've got another prayer shrine. Another prestige shard, which is good. There's got to be some banditos around here somewhere. Let's track them down, dude. I smell villainy in the air. I can smell it. It's kind of a, a stinky sort of old hamburger smell. A desert thief squadron. You haven't heard of the famous Desert Brotherhood? Hand over your valuables if you value your life. Hell nah, brother. About to knock that mustache off your domer, bro. Let's do this thing. It's time for Big Hammer. Ooh. Yeah, look at those damage chunks disappearing. Yeah, there's more minions. How you guys like being outnumbered, huh? Yeah, it's not so fun, is it? Ooh, he's stabbing that guy to death right there. Like, step on his head, get him! Okay, so we've got our iron, and we've got some Utar, and we have completed one of our first battles. Unfortunately, the Desert Brotherhood is not super happy that we wiped out some of their, you know, hermanos. And so, here we are. What's up this way? Is there anything out the- oh, what is that? It seems as though something important happened here. Before you is a strange obsidian flame. Though you are some distance from it, you can sense a threat. Something is watching you. As you approach, you hear a hoarse voice in your mind. Nay! Give me food! The voice startles you. You cannot be sure if it was just a hallucination. Run! You leave cautiously. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, stones are on fire. And it's a purpley sort of corrupted fire, and I don't like that. That's a bandit camp over there. We can attack it once we get a little bit stronger. Here's another little feeder fight. Let's keep giving our guys some XP. I want them to level up so I can upgrade them. We also need to find, it's like a rose potion or something like that. It's a white something. It's like a white flower potion. Uh, that'll allow us to restore one of our mercenary squads back up to full manpower. Then again, we're doing pretty good right now. Nice. The last time I played this, the first group of guys that I got were archers. And so me and my partner were both ranged that I started out with. And we had all archers, and it was just a mess, dude. It was really hard to get anything done. And so the troops that you can hire on any given day are kind of, like, randomized. Let's see here. There's two floors, recommended level three, and an abandoned sawmill. Yeah, we can try. Seems like there aren't any enemies on the first floor. You were ambushed by another party. That's probably not good. Can we take them? Is this like, am I going to have to spam my abilities and just hope for survival? I think I am. Oh, these guys AOE, dude. Yeah. 
AoEs are super broken in this game, and the developers haven't fixed it yet. Uh, so anyways, just keep in mind that like if you want to win at this game, AoEs are super crazy busted. Like, they deal entirely way too much damage. Uh, so we lost our swordsman right there, so they're injured. We lost, ah, eh, weak, dude. I was expecting there to be, like, bandits in there. I don't know, it said recommended level 3, and we're, like, level 2. But we have, like, more guys than I normally have at this point, so unfortunately, like, I'm getting a little bit brazen right now on what I'm willing to attempt. In a couple days, we'll be able to hire some more people, too. Here's the eastern outpost of the Redstone Keep. Uh, is there a merchant here? I need some food, dude. Let's get, uh, yeah, man, let's get some non out here. That sounds good. I get some non. I love non. Non is amazing. All right, so now we have 107 food, so we're in a little bit better shape. Let's keep grabbing treasures, and then we'll see if we can find a few more feeder fights just to get a little bit stronger off of. Ah, there's some Desert Brotherhood dudes down here. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. We can handle these right here. These are basically like the mountain war. These these are mountain bland, band war blade, or I'm sorry, mount and blade war band. God, I can say words today. I swear to God. Uh, so I haven't had my caffeine yet. Okay, you just you gotta forgive me and my inability to speak at the given moment. I just I haven't installed my caffeine mainline for the moment just yet. Ooh, that's a nice spear, the Lightfoot spear. I might try that out because we have that spear ability, right? The Dark Brotherhood has reassessed your strength. They can't take you on with a group of this size. So yeah, now they're going to start running from us. Uh, that's a war party right there. This game is actively at war, just like Mountain Blade Warband is. There's different lords. And there's different guys that are riding around trying to take over cities. You too can take over cities and like conquer stuff later on in the game. But for right now, it's not really an option. There's a bandit right there. We can get him. Let's run his ass down. I don't think we need backup for this one. Oh yeah, I was gonna try out the spear. Yeah, we give the spear a go. I wanna see how the spear does, martial-wise. Cool, we've cleansed the lands and they are now safer than they were before from Brigandry. Uh, we've got a Harvest Iron Knife. We've got a Savage Throwing Knife. We've got a White Rose Potion. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's what that does, the White Rose Potion. I knew it was like a White Flower Potion. We need that to restore our squads, basically. Uh, they aren't, like, crazy wounded except for this guy. Oh, it only brings back one guy. Oof. Okay. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. That's fine. I shouldn't have let him get killed in the first place, so I can't be upset about the consequences. Like, I got too brazen. I tried to take on challenges that I wasn't quite ready for yet, and I got punished for that, and that's okay. Uh, we wanted to try out... Let me see over here. I'm going to go back to my inventory real fast. I did want to try out the spear and see how that does. It's got 55 attack. How does the hammer do? It's got 55 or it's got 75 attack. So we're gonna not hit quite as hard, but we move faster now and we can strike from further away. I don't know if these go in like oh those get okay, so you throw those. This has 90 or this has 55, 4 spirit, 100 range. I can harvest. Okay, and apparently maybe it cleaves or something. It says it's got a scimitar type attack. I don't know exactly what that means, but, you know, might be kind of helpful. Uh, this guy has a job for us. We're recruiting volunteers. Recently, a group of desert hippies came by blabbing about being followers of the Fire God. They're converting people all over the place so they can perform a summoning ritual for the Fire God. It's tricky. This happens to be a mountainous region in the south, and some claim the, mountain or the mount molten lava belongs down there. The local sultan has men garrisoned there to defend the town entrance. Our men can't get any closer to find out exactly what folks are up to. If you take three squads over, I can entrust you with this. Okay. I think I have three squads, but that quest is probably hard. Right, let's see what's down this way real fast. What is this? A bookseller. Huh. He'll teach me how to do charge. Eh, I'll mull it over. I'll think about it for later. I gotta farm up some more XP real fast. Uh, no. Pursue and kill them. Don't let them get away. They are worth delicious, delicious XP. Oh, I strike in a straight line. I also strike a lot faster. Okay. Like, I don't hit quite as hard, but... Yeah, it's got, like, a little combo. Hey, another white rose potion. Nice, dude. We also got a cactus fruit. Okay. That probably just adds to my food pile. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. 
What's this over here? A limestone flower? I'm actually going to use the potion on these guys. There we go. As you can see, like, the, the UI is kind of clunky. Like, I, I would definitely like the UI to be a little bit better. Uh, there's a lot of menus that I think are kind of, like, unnecessary. So, like, I, I think that there's probably a way where if you got rid of the stats over here, and you kind of slid this up and over this way so it takes up the whole screen, and then you expand it, right? They would have plenty of space on the side where you could put the inventory over here and you could basically condense the menus in, in a way that would make it a little bit cleaner. And then you could just drag and drop stuff onto people that you wanted to have. So like you click on them, there's a little reserve space up here. Like, I don't know, it's just my way of thinking about it is that like they've got the inventory menu over here, but they've also got the party menu. And I feel like there's a way to marry those two together without kind of having lots and lots of clunky menus and whatnot running around. Uh, oh, Desert Brotherhood. Hold on. We gotta kill these guys, too. I'm not gonna give the Desert Brotherhood a pass, man. So long as they're made out of juicy strawberry-flavored XP, I'm going to keep murdering them. They basically stand no chance against us. Oh, man. They're getting butchered out here. All right, so we've wiped out a we've wiped out a couple of dudes. I don't know if they're gonna send bigger, badder dudes after us after a while. Like if they're gonna get salty about me killing off their boys nonstop. I don't know. Mm, there's a chief. What does a chief want? We need Tarkila flour, and we'll pay 12 utar. As far as I know, you can buy them in floor. Will you help us do that? Uh, I'll think about it. I mean, I'm not really like a flour delivery guy. Is anyone here willing to follow me? If you can meet our recruitment fee, we have some Nazir farmers willing to follow your cause. Okay, uh, yeah, we can do that. We could take some Nasir farmers. I don't know what they turn into, uh, but the Nasir farmers. Oh, wow, okay, so they've got a pretty sizable troop tree here. Yeah, so we can turn them into wizards down there and clerics. They can be cavalry. Looks like we can also convert them into crossbowmen, which is probably what I'll do with them. But it looks like they've got to hit fairly high level before that's going to be an opportunity anyways. Like, it looks like they got to be level 8. So I'll give that some thought. But we'll try to keep them around and we'll try to keep them safe. Does anybody else want to join me? Oh, uh, we can only recruit once per week. Okay, well that means we can go back to the eastern place too and grab another guy over there. Uh, you want to keep your party small though. Uh, one thing that this game does not tell you from the beginning is that the XP for battles is split between the squads that participated in it. And so we're kind of like maxed out for right now until we start amassing some greater combat successes. Because you'll note that we get less and less XP for each of these fights as it gets distributed around. Let's see, has that actually done anything for me? So these guys are level four. These guys are level six. Those guys actually doesn't take that long to level. I think we're right about on the sweet spot right now for our armies where we can like farm them up to be a little bit more advanced and a little bit more deadly. Uh, what's going on over here? Anything special? Oh, it's raining on my head. Raindrops keep falling on my head. It's raining in the desert right now. I don't know if you've ever been in the desert during the rain. I used to work in Death Valley a lot. And so anyways, being in the desert during the rain is hella crazy because, like, the desert is, like, super dead and lifeless during the day. Like, when the sun is out or whatever, you don't really see much aside from, like, a rattlesnake, you know, like, or some birds, like, some buzzards flying around. Uh, but anyways, when the rain comes out, dude, the desert comes to life, like, in moments. It, it's kind of crazy to see. There's little snails running around, and there's bugs flying around, and all the creatures kind of come to life just for that event because it only rains a couple times a year. And so, like, it, it becomes one of those things where all of the animals there have evolved to effectively capitalize on that rain at a moment's notice. So rain in the desert is kind of a an interesting thing to live through. And if you've never experienced it, give it a go. What's this guy want? Identical notices have been posted by the guard. To the north, there is a mine. You will see it if you go to the end of the canyon. After the Black Sun, miners saw a ghostly fire down there. They got injured or went missing frequently. It was eventually abandoned. What do you want me to do? Go see for yourself if you think you can survive. Okay, they want me to go to the Redstone Mine? Well, I've got some little dudes. Like, I can't say whether or not we're going to do a great job over here. I think the redstone mine was off to the right, actually. The Cowardly Warrior. Let's see. A Gathering of Bandits. Yeah, let's take them on. Uh, 
Like, I'm sure we've got the weight to handle this. I'll summon some extra help, too, just in case. Yeah, get that guy right there. There we go. Let's give him a little quick poke. Oh, cool. My Nasir Farmer's level. And we got a bunch of XP for that. Okay, so knocking over these little bandit huts, dude, that's the stuff. You loot their things for yourself. Hell yeah. That's my favorite type of thing, is the thing for me and myself. Uh, we can level this guy up. What does most want to do? This contract summons an amateur bounty hunter with 30% health and attack. Okay, so we get like the upgraded bounty hunters, basically. I am using a spear right now, so we could get an ability, and I think that's a good idea. Because like I said, like... AOEs in this game are, like, super overpowered. Oh, look, it's Malak. Hey, suddenly you hear somebody calling you. The weirdness in the person's voice sounds familiar. You don't remember me? My benefactor. It's me, Malak. The Malak that saved you from the Ifrit. Or that you saved from the Ifrit. You hadn't forgotten him. He puts away his tomes and turns to take your hand. My benefactor, I found you. What's up? I'm in desperate need of your help. You must know how powerful the Ifrit are. They have recently begun to attack humans in groups, and if the rumors are true, the most powerful Ifrit are nearly indistinguishable from humans, except for superficial differences. They have their own language, intelligence, and powerful magic. They evolve and adapt quickly, too. If this continues, humans will be unable to defeat them. What do you want me to do? I found a secret base for the Ifrit. They seem to be planning some shameful conspiracy. The Pahoyhoy Lava Floyd to the south of Redstone Keep is where I'll wait for you. Only you can prevent this disaster. Okay, well then I guess I'll go do that. Uh, let's see here. There's wounded men in the rain. From talking to one, you learn their caravan was raided and cleaned out by bandits. Rains came after the robbers hit, and the victims reckon the robbers remain close by. Uh, yeah, help them. It's impossible to track anybody down in the downpour, and you fear for the weak and wounded. You hunker down and treat them. Even though you've technically saved their lives, you perceive tension and awkwardness at having failed to return their goods and their livelihoods. Oh, weak, dude. I meant, like, go chase down the bandits. But yeah, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Sands of Salzar. This game is in early access, so be aware it's going to change as time goes along and it develops. There are going to be bugs and little hiccups and whatnot with the game. But I do think that like anything that's sort of like a mercenary company commander game tends to be kind of appealing to me. And so I've been enjoying my time with it, even though it does have some rough edges. I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And that's all I got for you. Bye, everybody.